Hey guys, I uh, I really got to make these videos as I'm doing stuff, but um, I'm switching out my front air suspension. So one of the things that I, I mean, I'm just looking at the Tesla service manual. Look there if you, you know, need any clues or anything, but um, I'm switching it out and that is where the air shock connects. And you can see, you know, there's, there's a screw right there. There's a screw right there. And there's a screw underneath the cable right there. And they are all 13 millimeter, or at least that's what I used. And then there's the center brass fitting for the, the, the air hose, right, right there. And that's 10 millimeters. Um, so what I did is pulled the tub out, pulled all of that out, right? And then I took this fuse box. There's two screws in the bottom. Then there's one screw that goes on the top right down there. And I removed that just so I could pull it out. And then that way I could get my ratchet back there and get some more leverage on it. Especially that the back one that's hidden right there. You can't get, you know, a straight socket down there. And so, you know, I was able to put it down and then get some leverage by putting my one arm this way, my other arm that way, right? And then twist it. Um, so here's, here's the, the old air shock, right? And every time I go over a bump, it thunks, it makes some god-awful sounds. I talked to another guy that's in my local Tesla group, and what he did is he pulled this, I don't know if it's a cotter pin, but just this pin up here pulled this cap out and then there's a nut in there and he tightened that nut down and then reinstalled it and everything was okay. Um, and I might, I'd probably still do that, but I, I ended up getting this replacement, you know, for 200 bucks. And so I had to debate, is it worth going through all that work to get that thing back in there reinstalled you know, after I tighten it down and it's still making noise and I did the math and then the math in my head was for 200 bucks, I'll just put a new one in. So anyway, I put a new one in. So I'm, I'm still, I got to put it all back together, right? You can see at the top that the screws aren't in down here. It's not either. But one thing I wanted to make on the video is it's just me, right? There's nobody else helping me. So as a one man crew is a way I figured out to get it up in there was taking this upper control arm, moving it to the side, which took the CV axle pressure off of the strut. So I moved that over, and then with my body physically in here, I looked for the holes, lined the holes up with these three screws, right? And then kind of slid it up in there, made sure that this was in the right position, right? Because it, this control arm you know, it's got to go through there. You don't want it turned around the other way because then it's going to run into your uh, sway bar link on your sway bar, right? So it's got to be on that side. Also make sure that there's a, a screw back here that goes to the, um, it's a brake line, right? Make sure you pull that off of the, the current one. It just screws into the bottom right there. Sorry to make you sick. Um, screws into there. Make sure you get that off, right? And then put it in. And I put it physically into it. I don't screw it in all the way, just enough to where it doesn't fall and I don't lose it. Um, but once I lifted it up into place, naturally it wants to fall down. So it's like, well, do I put this, put the bolt in here? And maybe I should. I don't know. I'm figuring this out. But what I did is once I got it stuffed up in there, then I just let the control arm just slowly let it go this way, which pinned this air strut against the lower control arm, right? It's physically pinned, like it can't fall. It's sitting on top of that bushing and not in a heavy way or in a bad way, but it's just sitting there with the pressure holding it in place. And then I can put those three screws in on top and put the air valve back in. Then once I do that, then, you know, I can move it over, move the upper control arm over, put that bolt back in again, and then tie it all back together. Um, one thing in the service manual it does talk about is using toolbox to go in and drain the air from the strut. I didn't do it because I don't have toolbox access. I probably should have just gotten it for a day. But what I did is I just released the valve enough to where I could hear it, the air just leaking out and then I just let it leak out until, I don't, it took like 45 minutes or something stupid. But 
anyway, it worked, right? Um, so I'll get this all put back together and then I'll take the current piece that's connected to the top of the new strut, right? And install that on the hose and then bring the old one back down here. And then I'll try to remove this cotter pin. And you can see there's a little gap right there. So you can put a tool under there and spin it out. So I'll spin it out and see what it looks like. I think this is just holding the air in and then the air goes around it, right? So I don't know, maybe I'll fix it up and then I'll have a fixed one if this happens again. Because if not, it just goes into the landfill, right? Nobody's going to want to buy your, your janky old air shock. But anyway, that's what I'm up to. Hopefully that's helpful to somebody. Let me know. Make sure that you, you know, you take that speed sensor anchor off. You take the brake line off the bottom as you're uninstalling it, right? And then all of this stuff, you can look it all up. I'm going to lube this up while I get it off. It seems to be... Oh, you can hear a little creaking. Yeah, you hear that? So, yeah, I might might squirt a little lube up in there. I've got a injector needle, so I might, you know, put the injector needle in there and fill that full of lube. And, yeah, because that's, that's creaky. All right. Anyway, best of luck to you. Let me know if you have any questions.